back a moment because now we'll turn our attention to the other match which I was at at uh, Parc des Princes in Paris. France already with uh, that emphatic win over England under their belt at Twickenham. Scotland having narrowly gone down to Ireland at Muddyfield and so few people gave Scotland a glimmer of a chance in this one but uh, it was really quite a turnabout in performance. France not as good, Scotland certainly greatly improved looking and coming so close to their first ever victory at Parc des Princes. Jean-Pierre Rive leads the French side to face Scotland onto the field. And at the back there, a key figure, Serge Blanco, the French fullback. Conditions dry, grey overcast above, but the pitch in perfect playing condition. And this French side, 12 of the team that won at Twickenham. The three changes bring in new halfbacks, the first cap for Christian Delage, and recalled as his partner Pierre Berbizier winning his ninth cap and a new hooker in Jean-Louis Dupont. Referee today, Alan Richards from Wales, his third international. Scotland with 11 clubs represented, three changes from the side that lost against Ireland. 35-year-old Jim Aitken is back at top to bolster the front row. Number eight is changed with the British Lion, John Beattie, returning in the hope of winning more loose ball, whilst almost out of the blue, the one change in the back sees Brian Gossman at 31 win his second cap only at fly half, his previous one against Wales in 1980. Scotland then to kick off through Jim Rennick. Full excited house here and uh, the home supporters confident this could be another championship winning season for France. Two years ago of course with the same home fixtures it was a grand slam. Drop out, touch there, and half charge down by Colin Dean. Set up by Jim Aitken. Just outside the French, but a good ball for Laidlaw. Through to Gossman. Gossman with Robertson outside. French cover across in time. And a fine start by the Scottish back. So the first scrummage then awaits. Aitken against Papel on board. Milne against Gospital, about 12 metres out from the French goal line. See Alan Richards just... Uh, checking the scrummage. Berbizier to feed. Penalty against Scotland and uh, early fisticuffs in the match. Penalty already awarded. Alan Richards uh, firmly sending Scotland back the 10 metres. Scotland on. Delage has missed his first touchline kick. Keith Robertson took it well. That's dropping on the French 22. And the collision there between Berbizier and Joanel. The ball in touch. There's Jean-Luc Joanel, this key figure, the tail of the line-out, his 25th international. That's the view for Colin Dean, this line-out, a couple of metres outside the French 22. Shortened line, BT there. Aitken takes it on the drive. Penalty to Scotland as France go over the top. So here's that early chance for Peter Dodds. which really could do wonders for Scottish morale if he can get on target. But now just coming up to four minutes played of this first half. Young Peter Dodds, the joiner from Gala, has a chance with the back cloth of whistles from the crowd. The Dodds won't let that worry him. And how? Great start for Scotland. Just four minutes gone. And they lead three points to nil. Peter Dodds, the fullback. Like that. So the prolific Gala kicker kicks two penalties against Ireland, gets his third, crucially, in the opening moments against France. Restart by Delage, cut back by Osso. Scotland's 10 metre line, or even possession. Set back to Berbizier, Delage, Podonu, Velasquez, almost through on the interception was Roger Baird, that's Blanco in possession. On the counter attack, as he loves to do, a tremendous pace throughout, look at that, Blanco still. Feeds on now to 
Marcus Stair inside Scotland's 22, steering run from the French fullback. Brilliant play by Serge Blanco, the man born in Caracas for Biarritz, to delight, no doubt, Jean-Pierre Rive there, leading France for the 23rd time. France wheel it, laid law in possession, safely away. So there's Roy Laidlaw, a lot of responsibility today on his shoulders after the disappointments of that defeat so narrowly by Ireland at Muddyfield. There's Ian Milne, looking all right now. Penalty to France for going off the shoulder by Scotland. And now we'll see just how weak a part of France's armoury is their place kicking. With uh, Canberra Barrow gone and no Real top-ranking place kicker, the duties rest on the boot of Serge Blanco. So about 34 metres, seven minutes played. Blanco with a chance to level the scores. No win to bother. Strokes it, straight through. So back to square one. Seven and a half minutes gone of the first half. And Blanco levelled it like this. Well, a little more accurate than uh, his attempts in training yesterday, but it's what happens on the day that matters, of course. Play continues. Leslie again. That's a bit of pack ball. And the initial throw, a judge not straight enough. So Roy Lager, captain, his 20th international match in a row. Brilliant work by the Scots. Keith Robertson, his fourth international try, has really set this game alight and stunned the French crowd. This was how it came. It was just there, Bizier could put him out. Just the tonic that Scotland could have prayed for. 7-3, can Peter Dodd convert it from the touchline? Looking good. Magnificent. And what a startling assault Scotland have made. 16 and a half minutes gone. They lead by a clear six points. 21 minutes played here at Parc des Princes. Brian Gosford from the West of Scotland Club. Fire to enliven the proceedings. The crowd, though, now subdued by what they saw in the first quarter of this match. And something I think they had not expected. Laid over to think about seven metres outside the 22. The pressure from Der Bizier got to the nose. Good play for Baird. In fact, though, the flag of Clive Norling on that far side, already raised. Encouraging probe that though by Brian Gossman. Quite a surprise recall in place of Ron Wilson who played against Ireland. But of course John Rutherford still out of action through injury. But doing well so far. But now France run out. And the loose ball fly hack through. Calder chasing up. And the whole Scottish back row there first on France's 10 metre line. Set back for Laidlaw, Big Oxford. Looking for Baird, trying to create the opening for him. Back there is Verbizier towards his own goal line. And that's good ground for Scotland. But with Scotland 
those five metres or so from the French goal line. On their throw-in, deflected, but that throw-in... ..to be taken again. Maybe Alan Richards, the referee, not too happy first time round. So, a second chance for Scotland to win this one back. Scott's in possession. That rebounded off Laidor, and that was unfortunate. Scott just put in at the scrimmage. Man who's replaced uh, Ger Martinez. Belbizier with the feed. Puts it in crooked and gives Scotland a free kick. Just about 10 metres out. So of course no direct kick at goal, but always the drop goal option after the initial tap. Here's the set piece to Gossman and here's the drop goal opportunity. Straight through. What a moment for Brian Gossman. Brilliantly taken. So with a quarter of an hour and this half to go, Gossman increases Scotland's lead and in an emphatic way, never in doubt. And his first point for his country on his recall at 31 years old, 12 points to three, 25, almost 26 minutes gone. Well, a moment surely to hearten all in Scotland. And Colin Dean's enjoying the fray. And France now certainly having to look for their laurels. Joannel with the tap. Reed mishandling first time. Scotland obstructing the line out and give away a penalty within kickable range. The new and uh, Stella had come across with uh, Estev in anticipation of the quick tap penalty, but Jean-Pierre Reeve wants a point that may be more likely to come from this penalty attempt, says Blanco. One successful kick, one miss. Well, it looks so easy when the posts appear that wide, but it's about 35 metres out. Blanco. Nine points ahead Scotland at this moment. That's on target. So Gottman's drop goal quickly cancelled out. It's back to within six points. Blanco. Straight and true. 13 minutes to half time. Scotland really uh, giving away points needlessly then to keep starting back and that's Esther on the left wing taken by Dodds through to Gossman Calder losing possession the referee plays advantages Dodds and Bow gathers it in and this French pack beginning to lose 21 of his now through Rodriguez to pack it up for the new he's trying to find that link to the three quarters who had at least two men over but the spot scavenged and Dodds finally puts it away. Reeve so nearly got that breakthrough. The forward effort superb. Rodriguez, top of that board, then Reeve, but the half to the three quarters, just intercepted by Scotland. Before throw, deflected back by Tones. Gossman now, Rennick. That's a testing ball. Back there is Stella. Gets away from Baird. Inside to Blanco. And the crowd cheer every attacking move and counter-attack like that. But so far, this vaunted French three-quarter line has had little clean ball to use from the pack, which is, if anything, a little sluggish by comparison with the Scots. Just short of the halfway line. There's Lee tripping. Kept on by uh, Delage. Rennick not able to control it. Dodds does. Oh, good. Up to the halfway. 
Barbusier though, c'est là. There was a 4 to 2 advantage, but still facing hard is up there. Back there is Robertson. Well, this was, to me, uh, a wasted opportunity. Delage had three men outside. There were just the two Scots, and they had to retreat. In desperation, Keith Robertson with Esther breathing down his neck. And Robertson now, and that was late. But had the throw in. Condor, the middle jumper. And of course, Rodriguez and uh, Juanel behind him. So the options open. Meant for Juanel, eventually comes back. Toussaint. They have it now. Uh, Bouzier de Lage, straight through to Belascar. Couldn't hold it, Rennick. Rennick dummies the Calder, feeds him now. The intern does a lovely pickup by Leslie. Robertson again. Fine pickup from him too. To Milne. Great support work by the Scottish pack. This is Beatty. Looks for support. Gets it from Aitken. Almost up to the French 22. And still the Scots in possession. Winning it through to Laidlaw to Gossman. Rennick couldn't hold it. But Gossman in support. And France have it. But... The ball already being knocked forward. And really a moment to, of good fortune there for Scotland. And the scores are level once more. Now it's Scotland must feel the pressure with their nine-point lead whittled away and now level terms once more so the seconds counting down to half time it's over a minute plus a little injury time to add on Scotland so the BT at the back that's totally uh, misjudged that was through by Osso now Delage deflected by Cuthbertson Rennick there pick up by Gossman up to the French 22 Renewed uh, life again from the Scottish pack. The switch by Laidlaw. Rennick. Rennick still. Rennick. Held about 18 metres out. But the French pack won that one. The kick of Delage charged down by Johnston. Finally away to touch. Nothing showing. PC and Zanel having a bit of a tussle and tangle at the tail. Reeves can't control it. Milne through with Dean. Back into the French 22. This is trying to work it back. Comes now. Gossman looks for a second drop goal. Brilliant. On the stroke of 40 minutes of this first half, it's Brian Gossman that restored the lead for his country. Superb drop goal on the run after fine work by the Scottish pack. And what a recall this is proving to be for the 31-year-old to cap before against Wales in 1980. A regular on the bench with on Scotland's tour of Australia. And now Scotland ahead again in injury time at the end of this first half by three points. But the ascendancy and, and seemingly the discipline of this French pack still not in evidence as much as it was at Twickenham against England. But a bit of uh, tugging uh, indicated there by referee Alan Richards. The end result is a further penalty to France. And yet again, says Blanco called up by Jean-Pierre Yves. These infringements by Scotland within kicking range. A thorn in their flesh. And certainly proving uh, an Achilles heel for them at the moment. Blanco has missed three. Can he put it level this time? 
almost four minutes of injury time gone. He makes an end to his previous failures. So a third successful penalty goal for him to add to a conversion of Esther try puts it level at half time. A thrilling first half of attack and counter attack. That initial surge took them to a 12 point to the lead. Whittled away by, though, by the French, who got the drop goal significant feature. But now at 15 all, what a second half with you for, and who would dare to get the winner at the end of the match. And of course, memories come flooding back of 1969 when Scotland last won in Paris. Perhaps significant that their coach today is Colin Telfer, who was in that 1969 side and how dearly he would love to be trainer of the side that won for the first time at Parc des Princes. France start this second half then. The score's 15 points all. And no obvious superiority by this French pack. Uh, Scotland have clearly raised their game since Murrayfield. Laidlaw now to Gossman, who's doing well. Tackled that time, though, firmly and decisively by Zwanel. Look how effectively the Scots have cancelled out the superiority of which we'd heard and read so much here in Paris these last couple of days. One try apiece. They're busy now. Blanc goes storming up but they are unable to control and all this sheer pace in this French three-quarter line yet to be used to full advantage Laidlaw Gossman Renick on the switch rather enveloped in a net of French forwards. That's back on the Scottish side, goodness knows how. Loisel's little chip through, not going far enough forward. Dupont sets it back. Now Bizet links to Delage. Good on you. Blanco coming up. Velasca, superb tackle there by Baird. But now it's set up. Rennick again, and good play by the Scottish in defence. And it is really a firm, decisive tackle by Roger Baird of Kelso. So much more line out ball for Scotland. Laidlaw to Gosford. This is out Rennick, through to Johnston. Blanco's position for that one. Blanco still away from two, has support outside, still Blanco up to Teddy Dupont on you, and into the corner goes a stair but not, the great cover was from Roger Baird. Roger Baird has sped from the left wing to take out his opposite number on that far right of the field. But what a run by Blanco, weaving his path through, eluding the tackle there of Johnston, getting away from Robertson. And it looked as though it was going to be an open line. Hodonu was there, so was Estev on the wide outside. And there was Roger Baird to save the day for Scotland. 13 minutes remain as Upper and Board goes on the drive. About five metres out. Scotland tear back and Milne saves the day with the drive, supported by Leslie. Laidlaw and the referee in fact had already indicated a Frenchman offside allowed play to continue and Laidlaw made a fine clearance but what an improvement clearly we have seen in the Scottish effort perhaps most significantly in this department the line out pouring through on the French ball to Laidlaw to Gossman back but uh, rather into a bit of bother but it's set up again Laidlaw has a sally himself but not too far just outside the French 22 and the French though were caught offside by that manoeuvre and the kick 
That goal will be in front of the post for Peter Dodd. The French back arrayed in the line offside. Dodd can receive the lead for Scotland with this kick. Head on to the post. That yawning gap awaits Peter Dodd's penalty goal attempt. 15 points all as he kicks. Less than 10 minutes remain. And the young Gala fullback has a barrage of noise to contend with as well. It will not worry him. Or has it? He's missed. It stays at 15 all. Any goal kicker will tell you those in so many ways are the hardest of them all because <laughs> number two for Esteb and France lead for the first time in the match from the touchline Blanco. Just away to the right so 19.15 with those six and a half minutes to go by that one by Leslie Goffman, Rennick, Dodd no way through and so the kick inevitable the final kick it is of the match so long Scotland ahead for so long I will in the second half and still that fateful moment for Scotland came with his third second try but what an improved performance by this Scottish side how much so they will lose those penalty offences inside their own 22 France 19 Scotland 15 a hard game, Jean-Pierre. How do you feel? Uh, a little tired, you know, and it was a really hard game and difficult job for, for us. The Scottish team played very well in Paris. And the French team did not play as well as at uh, Twickenham, not as good as at Twickenham. Uh, yes, I, I think so, because, you know, before the game, uh, the Scottish course was really with us all the time. And it, we had a lot of pressure on us and it's very really difficult when you're a favorite yes. yeah, and yes. it's very really difficult for, for all the rest of the